Good evening, everyone. I'm here to talk about Carver Park. We have a Green Acres grant to do improvements there. I just wanted to cover what we're proposing as part of those improvements and uh, get some feedback. So we have some choices to make. I'd like some feedback. I'll tell you what the rec department um, has recommended and hopefully we can make some decisions and uh, get this out to bid. So to start, what I have up there is the kind of an overview of the existing conditions at Carver Park. We're really focused on the basketball courts as part of this project. So there's three fenced in asphalt courts in various conditions of disarray. They need to be replaced fully. Um, different sizes, we have one NCAA, also NBA size court. That's the color coded one, it's red, that you'll see out there. We also have a high school size court, um, and then we have what we call a bitty court, and that just really doesn't meet any size restrictions. It's smaller than junior high, um, and that's the third court out there. The NCAA, is it not working? Gotta turn it on? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Um, do you need me to start over, Frank? Or are we good? No, you're good. Okay. Um, the NCAA court and the bitty court are lit currently today. Um, the high school size court is not lit. Uh, the lighting is outdated. Honestly, I'd say the NCAA court you can consider lit. The bitty court really doesn't get that great of lighting. Um, there are some bleachers out there. I have some pictures of them. They're not compliant. Um, they're five row. Again, they probably need to be replaced as well. Looks like they are getting used though um, during the events at the courts. Um, last thing to note is there is a parking lot. Um, I'd say associated with these courts. It's kind of um, catty corner with the courts. There's nine spaces there. Uh, does not seem to be heavily used. Uh, all the parking on the street. There's also a parking lot near the splash pad. That seems to be what people use the most. Um, I bring that up because I'm going to show three different concepts, and one talks about eliminating that parking, okay? So the first concept, Frank, if you can go to the next slide. This concept, um, and I'll kind of talk through it, I know it's hard to see, keeps the existing conditions generally the same. Um, the biggest difference is the existing conditions doesn't have the clear space around the outbounds of the basketball courts everywhere, you need five feet. So you need five feet before you hit the fence. So some of them, especially the high school court, gets extended, um, and we end up losing one parking space. So I'm just going to work from the top up here and work my way around. The top court here is a high school size court. The one below it is that bitty size court. Again, not meeting a standard, a little smaller than junior high. And then to, to the left, the main court, nice, thanks, Frank, is the NBA NCAA court. So same configuration, really, as you see out there, just getting it into compliance with that run um, length outside the boundaries. Yeah, of course. Okay. Do we, I mean, what do we need these NCAA standard court for? I mean, if we made two high school courts, and, uh, then we could probably get a junior high court in here, too, so the kids would have both options. Yeah. I think Deputy Mayor wants me to go to concept B. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, it's a, it's just that, well, that's my question. Do the yeah. street tournaments really need this NCAA, or could they play in high school court? You're talking about like a 10 foot difference, right? Yeah, a lot of feedback is um, a lot of people don't want to play on that large of a court. Right. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of running. Um, they prefer the smaller courts. So that's why I did create a few separate concepts okay. for some right. feedback I here. I just figured out that's a question. Well, yep. The nice part about this concept, something that's been brought up by the rec department, is if you see on the NCAA size court, there's on the um, north side, there's quite a, there's a large space there, right? So it's way beyond the five feet, Frank, yeah, right there, if you want to zoom in on that area, he's pointing at it. So they use that area for just, you know, sometimes they bring music out there, they have a portable scoreboard they bring out there. So just something that's been brought up that they'd like to maintain. Again, do you need that full size court for that or not? Um, so then I'm going to go over to, um, you can see associated with all of these options, I have sidewalk improvements proposed, bleachers, replace, replacing those bleachers on concrete pads, bike racks, um, and I'll go through some of the details at the end of what we're proposing, but that's going to be on all of these options. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So one of the concerns with this layout was there's no bleachers on that top court, correct? So correct. So if you have kids playing there, you really can't. And then, correct, and the access to it is really strange. So anyone that's out there today, this emulates that layout. Um, it's kind of awkward to get to the back. There's really nowhere to watch. You know, you're in that parking lot. We could lose a few more spaces and probably add something, but you'd be under um, the net. So 
yeah, a good point that that's not ideal. Um, a benefit here before we switch to the next concept is the NCAA size court, that area, the lights can remain. Right, so that wouldn't have to be replaced as part of this project. Um, you know, that's something we were considering replacing in general, but it doesn't have to be, which allows us to work with the grant budget that we have. Um, so if we go to the next concept, concept B, this really um, matches what the deputy mayor was just talking about, is do we really need that NCAA size court? Um, so in this, we provide two high school size courts. Those are on the plan right side, if you would, or the east side. Yep. Um, those are compliant with high school size courts, and you have two of them. Um, I really like the, uh, this layout, the, the fence, it's very clean, if you would. The other layout, we're losing some um, space just because some awkward uh, fence orientations. And then we have a high, uh, so, I'm sorry, and then the junior high school size court is right there to the left. And then it's the standard junior high court. Correct, so that's standard. It's important, I think, because we, you know, our kids, Right. They're going to come and practice and do some of the recreational stuff. They would have an actual junior high court to play on. Yeah, we're seeing leagues start to develop yeah. um, for outdoor basketball, um, and having standard courts is important. So that would need junior high. So it's a little bit larger than the bitty court that we saw in the last layout, and that exists out there today. Um, some advantages. Would the, junior, would the junior high court be one in the back then? Or next nope, it's, uh, right now I have the junior high court right there. Okay. So it's definitely something we could switch around. This is just really clean with the fence lines, right? You have nothing um, sticking out where you have to worry about padding or anything like that. Again, some disadvantages we talked about, maybe trying to add some viewing area for the high school court in the back. Um, that's uh, definitely something that we, we've not shown here. I think we could use that parking lot area, but it's less than ideal. So this way, if you were having a high school game, you could just we kind of have spectators. You could have a five and you could have a five seat. Correct. Yep. We so you didn't really have that option because you have yep. seating area by the NCAA. Which Correct. You have no high school seating area yeah. in the first option or in the existing. Like the seating, right, which gives us a better seat. Yep. I agree with you. Um, and again, we could do something to that parking lot. I do think it's underutilized. Um, another advantage here, again, you could see with the junior high court that's on the left, um, that existing lighting could remain if we were worried about some budget numbers. Um, Concept C is uh, the most um, extreme option, if you would, and this was to fit that NCAA size court and to provide a better orientation. Obviously, the parking is eliminated in this option. That's why I brought it up before. And you know, you're adding quite a bit of surface to this park. So this is two high school courts and an NCAA NBA size court. Um, that court would be rotated, so it runs parallel with 2nd Street. We could put some seating on the side, um, but again, the majority of the seating runs interior to the park, and I know that was a concern that was brought up previously. We did get some feedback, oh, and none of the lighting could remain in this option as well, so another cost that would be added. It's more square footage. This is the most costly option. Um, we did get some feedback from the rec department, um, and they liked this option. Um, but I think the feedback on whether that NCAA court is really required is the next step. Did we get did anyone reach out to any of the leagues that play? That's, that was my next question. We need to reach out to the basketball community because none of us here with basketball. Well, my family, because I'm not, but I, I reached out to my family. My yeah. brother's played in adult leagues. So, so he had a hip and shoulder replacement at, at 60 years old. So he, he said that you're going to find these adult leagues. They don't want to run the extra campus. They, um, you know. the, yeah, but it's fine to go. I go down to the tournaments. These are these are college players, NCAA players, street play players from New teams. York that bring in hundreds of people to Hackensack mm -hmm. to witness these games, just like they do in New York. These are street games. And it's a big thing when they happen. They bring hundreds and hundreds of people to these games. Um, it, just it, wanna, it depends on what we call an adult. League. I just want to make sure. Yeah, exactly. That's what it depends on. And I'm if an it adult, is college, so is a college. Right. Kid, if so it is college, then maybe we need we, to. We need to make sure. I, mean, I, I just want to do what the, what's best for the basketball mm -hmm. community. We're, we're not in a position to make that decision without reaching out to them. That's all I'm saying. Absolutely. If they say no, we can go with the smaller court, go with the smaller high school size. I think that makes sense. So the feedback we got is. Um, we'll get more and we'll find out and if it is if they want the larger court Do we have a preference between concept a or what I'm showing now? I think that deputy mayor you made a few good points on the high school court 
not being, you know, always being in that back corner. So, you know, this one does give it, give you full size courts, a lot more use here. Um, it doesn't give you like your high court, but it is at the plan. They plan their court, right? Yeah. Is there any way to get the bleachers anywhere for that back court? That's my concern. So if you look, the we did talk about that. Um, you could move the NCAA court plan left if you would and have a strip in between. Okay. For this, uh, we're recommending post tension. That's on the next slide. Um, having one contiguous uh, piece is just more economical, but definitely ways to achieve it. We did talk about that. Could you go back to option one then? Like, sure. we need it if we, if the mayor, as the mayor is speaking, if we really have college teams playing at one plan or college four, which depends on the analogies or not, then um, we may have to do it. So, at least with the first one, we only have one high school court and this one. There's no way we could make that second one into a whole different high school court for the younger children's minds to play. No, we don't really have the room to no achieve that. No way we can switch it around. This work against property lines here, unfortunately. So the way to switch it around is really concept C, where you get the, then you get the most. So I could fix it. I could the parking, and then we don't right. really get a junior high school. You could get to high school. Yeah, right. And the right is no. What's on that? What's on the far side there? What's back? What's behind where the junior court is? Um, that's private property. property. That's private property. Yeah. That's private yeah. property. Yeah. yeah, private property. Um, we're in the corner here, so the park kind of extends up, if you would. It's like an L shape over there, mm -hmm. and we're against the property line. And in the, on this side, there's no way to move it forward because it's not far yeah. off, right? What you know? What the dimensions? What's the length of that? Yeah, I think it's about. I think it's five feet. Um, we were just. I think we would lose the sidewalk. Can, can we use the, the green space to the south at all? Like that's our, our park area. Sure. I mean, you don't want to take away a lot of green space, but sure. I you, don't know if that's to do it the right way. Of course. Um, some, some advantages of working in the area where there's existing courts, uh, I know the courts aren't in great shape when you look at them, but they actually, they held up pretty well for the mm -hmm. long, how long they've been there. So they have a pretty good sub base. When we start working into different areas, you just be paying more for that sub base, but it's definitely an option. We so talked about that. The way I left as the last direct meet, the direct board meeting was to reach out to the basketball community. I don't know how well to see what the best options are. Yeah. I remember, maybe seven, what's the dimension? Seven? Or the junior high? Junior high? I'm going to just look so I don't just speak. I think it's 74 by 50. So you're off by about five feet right now from the existing bitty court. If you, if you came back into that little bit of green space back there, you took 10 feet. Um, towards the private property or towards Second Street? No, towards, no, away from Second Street, the back side towards, to the right of the picture. There's existing okay, trees there. Option a. Yeah. Is this option? No, wait. We're on option B right now. Oh, option yeah. B, I'm sorry. Yeah. So you mean slide this all plan right? You saying go back to is this option in now? Yes. Yeah. So to the right of the high school field and the Bitty court. Yeah. The Bitty field. What's what's there? That goes that's back. That's towards. the property line that Frank's tracing now, and then there's like a row of underbrush and some trees. So that doesn't go back towards the, the splash pad back in that way? That's no. not the property? Nope, that's down off the plan beyond where option A is the label. <laughs> I think the key is if they're really college players, we don't have a choice. Yep, keep that point. It's typical well, it's not so much that they're, they're adults. It's, I wouldn't say they're college players, but they're playing on a college level. These are most kids that are out of college. Mm -hmm. Some of them are probably still college players, but they're, you know. That's why I just want to check. Yeah, Let's yeah. just check yeah. with them. And then we can't, make, we can't make any decision until we get it. We can check with them, and then I think there's, you know, showing you that there's an advantage if we do three in a line. So I could provide you that. We, and we should bring some of them into a meeting. Uh, and if we get some people from the basketball community, I would talk to the high school coach. You may want to bring, I don't know, you want to bring uh, as Councilman Simmons here, because he runs the basketball. And you have to talk to the normal league participants, and the, people league that, the people that play, and say, you know, find yeah. out from them. They may say, yeah, we really need it, or they may say, no, we're happy to be 10 feet short. We need the guys that run this whole Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we could set up that meeting um, and then work through what sizes they need. 
And then from that point, it's fairly easy on just what the options are, right? And what the pros and cons are, nailing down the cost estimates. Thank you. Yep. Um, just to talk about some of the details we are proposing. Um, if you go to the next slide, please, Frank. Thanks. Um, so we are proposing post pension concrete. That's what you guys did at Columbus. Um, at this point, we're really not recommending that anyone put asphalt quartz back in. The longevity just is not there. Um, once you go and you have to mill and repave it the first time, you're spending more money. So I have some um, facts here just for consideration. Um, there's a 20-year warranty on a post pension concrete court. So that's from the installer. Um, right off the bat, if there's a crack that develops, they need to fix it. If there's anything structurally wrong, they need to fix it. Uh, lifespan, we expect 25 to 30 years, easily, minimum. And then the line striping and the color coding also lasts a little bit longer, so we expect 10 years um, off of that product. If you compare it to asphalt, um, again, you're looking at a much shorter lifespan. 10 years is really what we're seeing before you have to mill and repave it. At that point, when you go through that process, you're going to start spending more than you would have in the beginning. Uh, the color coding and the striping also doesn't last as long. We're seeing about seven years right now. Um, some other uh, things that we included in our Green Acres application. So in addition to the courts that we were talking about, we included um, obviously new basketball goals, some padding where necessary on the goals, team benches, uh, bike racks, uh, the fencing, all new fencing, all the way around, consistent height, 12 feet high. Uh, if you go out there now, you'll see there's portions that are much lower than that with some balls that could exit onto Second Street, so we're preventing that. Park benches, the concrete sidewalks I spoke of, bleachers, um, along with bleacher pads. So that will help with maintenance of the park. Drainage. Yep. So right now there are inlets that exist out there. Mm -hmm. um, we would be removing those. It grades right to Second Street and will go into the system that we're working on under the sewer separation project. So we don't expect any drainage issues out there. How is it now? Does it flood at all? They have inlets out there. Um, so it's just that there's inlets within the court. We try to avoid that with post section concrete, so we would remove those and just grade its drain. It looks beautiful. Yeah, these are the, if anyone hasn't seen yet. Yeah, these are Columbus um, courts <coughs> finished. I was proposing the same colors, remain consistent throughout the city, so I don't know if anyone has a different, um, any input there. And then we are proposing some, that's what the bike racks in the lower left corner um, look like, and then the benches. I know the city before has indicated to have some kind of center bar or something on the benches. We were proposing to have backless benches just so they can be multi-purpose depending on which area of the park you're watching. Can you, take really? okay. Can you still put the center bar on a backless bench? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, take it back, so um, one of the things that we'll work with the rec department, but what we previously spoke about is a bitty court or a smaller court. You can have an adjustable um, system, which is locked. No one could use, no one could do it except for the rec department. And the other ones we would have just standards. It's a Right. Yep. 
Um, but I did want to comment on it because it was brought up. And um, just some items that were are like supplemental, if you would. Uh, lighting all the courts is something we didn't include in the Green Acres funding. We could have supplemental, we could have that funding for it. That's no problem, we just have to go through the costs. Um, yeah, that was pretty much the only supplemental item here I in wanted to talk about. to the lighting area, are we trying to be consistent with all the lighting throughout the city so Fishini's lighting will be like a similar system as, even though it won't be the same type because baseball fields are different than yes, yeah. the courts. Um, we, we spec out the same product um, with obviously public contracts mm -hmm. law. We have to accept some approved equals, but in general, okay. yes, I think we're going to see the same lighting systems. Mm -hmm. LED, um, just low maintenance, much better than what you have out there now. So um, that's all I have on Carver Park. I did just want to go through and make sure we talked about everything. So layout preference, we'll have a meeting with the basketball um, a subcommittee, if you would. Um, also, what about lighting? How many courts do you think need to be lit? All of them? Is that something we should also ask the basketball group? Currently, there's two courts lit. I don't know if it's... Oh, it's not the high school court that's lit? Correct. It's the Biddy court and the um, NCAA court. So one thing we have to be careful with on the lighting, and I believe they should be lit, is the neighborhood itself. They can't be shining in people's windows. They can't be on too late. They can't be, you know. Um, so we have to come up with a time limit on the lights but, and the way they shine as well. And they need to obviously light the courts up, but we don't want any, uh, what do they call it, light pollution going into people's homes. Understood. Understood. And the technology today is obviously so much better. So um, about the number, do you guys have a preference or light all the courts, all three, two, keep consistent? Maybe the three, two, the configuration. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, um, we can, I mean, I'm sure they play, we can play it on the counts too. Maybe we should find out if those, you know, do they, if they are they playing in other counts? Okay, we'll definitely do some research on that. All right, that's all I have.